Hello everyone, welcome to my new tutorial about Async. In this new tutorial I'll show you how to use a layout manager called uh, Grid Bag Layout. And you will see that uh, Grid Bag Layout is uh, much more powerful than Flow Layout, for example, and Box Layout. So, and it's also a bit more complicated than these layouts. So I already created my class. And let's start from creating some components like grid frame. Also, let's create J panel. And uh, let's also create uh, three buttons. This will be one. Let's copy this, okay? This is two and three. Three, two. And that should be it when it comes to components. Now let's uh, generate constructor and let's set the grid bag layout for pan by calling set layout method. And here I'm going to pass new grid bag layout instance. Okay. And uh, for now, I'll just uh, add these buttons on a regular way by calling add method. Also, let's add panel on frame and let's call set default pose operation method. Back method and finally set visible method. So let's run this to see what we have. And here they are. As you can see, they are aligned in one row and they are centered on our J panel. And also there is there are no gaps between these buttons. And the first thing I like to do, I would want to do is to, for example, position this uh, button three below of button one. So to determine positions and sizes of my components, I'll have to use a object or instance called grid bag constraint. So let's create that object. JVC equal new grid bag constraints. Also you will import grid bag constraints from Java Auth. And in my add method, I'll pass this instance as a second argument for all buttons. Okay. Uh, and also if I run this, nothing changes. So let's try to determine positions of our buttons. And I'll do that like this. For button one, I'll say gbc dot grid x, and this will be a position of our button. So if you imagine uh, our container pane, in this case J panel or panel, and uh, grid bag layout treats a container as a grid, so this grid x will be position x position of our for our button button and also there is grid y and this is y position for our button one and that uh, those are positions for button one now let's create uh, positions for button two if i say gbc dot grid x and if i say one so button two will be in different column than our button one. But if I say GDC grid y equals zero, 
we will be in same row. And for button three, I'll say gdc dot grid x equal to zero. So it will be in same column like button one, but it will be in different row. And that will be one. Let's run this to see what we got. And as I said, here it is. Our button three is below of button one. But also, as you can notice, that uh, both, uh, button three is uh, larger than button one. So let's uh, make these widths are equal. And I'll do that by calling JVC fill variable. And I'll assign some value to that fill variable. And it will be grid bag constraints horizontal. Let's run it. And as you can see, with this same now, based on width of our column, and uh, width of column is based on width of uh, widest component. Okay. Uh, also, let's run this again. But uh, also, as you can see, we have no gaps between components. Let's solve that. I'll say JVC. If I define these values for JVC here, they will be valid for all these buttons. And I'll say insets. Actually, new insets. Also, you will import insets from Jalot. And here I'm going to pass uh, four arguments. And first argument will be a gap from top, gap from left, gap from right, and gap from bottom. And they will be all five pixels. Let's run it. And as you can see, we have gaps now. And last thing I want to show you is how to span uh, one of buttons in two columns or in two rows. And for example, I want to take space from a column where button 1 is and button 2 is for button 3. And I'll do that like this. I'll say here just above my button 3 and just below button 2. I'll say gdc dot uh, grid width and I'll assign value of 2 and this value says how much of columns I want to take and in this case that value will be 2 since we have only 2 columns and as you can see button 3 spans on these 2 columns so that should be it for this tutorial I hope this Layout Manager will be helpful for you. See you next time, where I'm going to explain how to use a MIG layout, also very powerful layout. Bye.